Thank you very much, Acting Speaker. And the first question for this grievance debate would be quite simple. How many times should a young violent offender in Victoria get bail to go out and reoffend? Is it one, two, three, eight, 12? These are numbers that have been reported when young violent offenders have gone out and reoffended. And the member for Yan Yen should have listened very carefully to the member for Mombolk then about trying to yell out and yell someone down while they're speaking and showing that respect when I'm talking about people on bail, like Ashley Gordon. And I'll go straight to Ash Gordon, who is a member of our community and the member, and, uh, and the member for Warrandyte would know very, very dearly because of the fact that he was killed by people on bail. And that shouldn't happen anywhere in our state. Just three months prior, these offenders were charged with violently attacking someone in their home and were bailed. And the reality is this has been happening in Victoria because the bail laws here were weakened. Both of them were charged with an aggravated burglary of going into the house of Ashley Gordon. I'm going to go through some of the quotes from the papers. Police will allege he was involved in a confrontation where he was injured and he died at the scene. This is not something that should be happening here in Victoria. This is a young man, a doctor, a professional, who whilst in his own home has tried to confront, confront people coming into his house with machetes. It's simply not the state that we want to live in. And we have to ask why, why were these young offenders out on bail at the time? Ashley Gordon, 33, died following a confrontation with two teenagers who allegedly broke into his house in the Melbourne suburb of Doncaster on January 13, as reported on Friday the 17th of May. The family of Dr Gordon said two 16-year-olds have been charged with murder and are in custody waiting trial. Dr Gordon's sister, Natalie Gordon, said the family and the people of Morwell, where her brother grew up, were still struggling to make sense of what happened. This has affected more than our family, Miss Gordon said. This has affected his patients, his friends, it's reached our entire community. This family is calling on the government to make change. And they get offended when they read comments like this. The Attorney General, Jacqueline Symes, said the government took youth offending seriously. Victoria has one of the lowest rates of youth offending in Australia. She said Victoria Police has identified a cohort of young people who are driving an increase of repeat offenders. If it is the case that it is a small cohort that the government keeps referring to, I would say it would be easier to reduce that crime and target the services to those young people. As reported in The Age, it goes on to state again, the two teenagers charged with, stabbing of murder, uh, with the stabbing murder of Don Carter, Dr Ash Gordon, allegedly showed a bloody knife to a friend. After, when two offenders allegedly came back to the house, they allegedly showed him the weapon the bloody knife. So now we've got two young people who are bragging about the fact that they've murdered someone in the Doncaster community. And if you think it gets the worst, it is their acting speaker. Dr Gordon's grieving mother, Catherine, said she was woken by a call from his housemate who was forced to deliver the news. Now, acting speaker, these are direct quotes from, her, from Dr Ashley Gordon's mother. He said that Ashley was gone and I said, gone where? He's gone. He's no longer with us, Miss Gordon told a current affair. I said, don't lie, you're joking. And I hung up the phone. Then the detective rang and I told him that I didn't believe him. So I hung up on him. We saw the police car coming up and I just prayed to God they'd keep going. I didn't want them to turn in the driveway, but unfortunately, it happened. Dr Gordon's father, Glenn, said the Victorian government's move towards softening bail laws for youth offenders was a cowardly response. The Victorian government's a disgrace. They should get out of office if that's the way they're thinking, Mr Gordon said. Speaking directly to the Premier in this article on July 4, 24, Ms Gordon demanded Jacinta Allen take action. Quote directly from her, man up, stop giving us empty promises. Start taking action. Stop saying that it takes a long time to get these strings across, across the line, she said on Thursday. Push harder, because one day it's going to be your family. 
that is affected by it, and I really hope you do something before. I feel heartbreak for this man's family, anger that they're not listening. They're not doing anything. They're talking a lot, but they're not doing anything. They'll probably continue to say there's no problem until their families are impacted by it. There are so many quotes that it goes on with what the family of Dr Gordon said. And unfortunately, Acting Speaker, and I think the worst case from this is, it's not a one-off death here in our state. William Taylor, he was killed by a 17-year-old in a stolen car. The 17-year-old was freed on bail straight after this accident when police gave evidence specifically attaching him to the crime. Yet he was on bail, or he was released on bail. The police went and checked up on him and just 48 hours later, he had breached those bail conditions and was unable to be located. Now, Victoria Police do absolutely everything they can to ensure they protect the community. They've gone out of their way then to use the resources they have to identify and find this 17-year-old, and they did. Unfortunately, this young man was put on bail again after he'd breached those bail conditions. We've got a court working within the system of the bail conditions implemented by this government. They can't make up bail laws. A magistrate can't change their decision based on what they think at the time. They have to work within the letter of law of what they get. And when we talk about Mr Taylor, it's very important we put on record as well here when the emergency services were called and they spoke to Mr Taylor's family and the comments from them. Will was a much-loved son, brother, partner and friend, the family wrote in a statement. He was a quiet, intelligent and thoughtful young man who loved his sport. And I grieve for that family here in Victoria. But I said again, if it was just two, it's two too many. But now we've got a third. And it's David Polina, who was just 19, who died in the early hours of Sunday morning in Preston when he was hit by a BMW, driving a stolen BMW, stolen by youths. And the quote from his sister, it's unfair, my brother has lost his life, she said. A furious family told the Herald Sun it's devastating for his parents, Nicola and Alona, as they come here for a better life and now they've lost their son. All because a 16-year-old allegedly wants to steal a car and have some fun. It's bad, he really was a nice young man. Fazaya Mahat, whose 25-year-old brother Khalid Mahat was stabbed to death by a group of suspected teenage gang members in Heidelberg West, told the Herald Sun that young criminals were not being held to account. They get released, bailed, because they're young. But it doesn't matter if you're young, Mr Mahat said. Everybody has been a teenager and we would never have committed this kind of evil stuff. It's really hard. It's an ongoing issue and there needs to be tougher laws. I hate to be in Melbourne because of this. It's really sad. It's traumatising, to be honest. I just remember everything that happened to my brother, she said. Every time we see someone that's lost their life in this way, the way my brother did, who has been hurt, it breaks our hearts. I never want anyone to go through this again. These are ongoing crimes here happening in this state. That the government changed the bail laws, which allowed so many of these offences to continue because these kids are getting bail. And I know the Premier came in here today and she wants to stand in this place and say, we're going to toughen the laws. First of all, you will never get a pat on the back from me for trying to rectify the problem that you created. You should just do that because it's the right thing to do. But what's worse than that is the member for Malvern has approached the government, we've sat in meetings with them and said, you're not going far enough. We've had comments on the radio from Justin Quill saying it's not going far enough. We need legislation with the original bail laws in place. The one thing, Acting Speaker, we can all agree on. Two years ago, we weren't hearing in the media about young offenders on bail killing people or young offenders on bail eight times doing aggravated burglaries. We started to hear that when the government softened the bail laws and that's why crime is out of control. It is as simple as that. We can talk about a thousand-page document which the government's pretending is going to fix the world. 
Half of it is a doorstop. It's got nothing in it that is going to make a difference. But the one thing they can do is to reintroduce 30B in the Bail Act. So anyone committed an indictable or a serious indictable offence has the additional charge of committing an indictable or serious indictable offence whilst on bail. It makes your test to get bail harder. We've got people here who I will say would most likely be alive because the offenders who were in this had committed serious offences and continued to get bail here in our state. And it goes on and on and on. Other crimes. Teen allegedly in stolen car travelling at 150 kilometres an hour days after getting bail over Beach Road cyclist in the age on March 28, 2024. A 14-year-old accused of urging his friend to run down Beach Road cyclist was involved in a police pursuit in a stolen car and caught smoking drugs within days of grant being granted bail. The 14-year-old was allegedly on three counts of bail and the court heard and back in the community for just three days when he allegedly fashioned a bong at his residential care home and consumed cannabis with another resident. On Wednesday, he allegedly absconded from care at 12.30am and was found in a stolen Mercedes-Benz seen travelling at upwards of 150 kilometres an hour, being, before, uh, being involved in a police pursuit which ended at Cheltenham, where stop sticks were used. He noted a particular concern was the team was accused of yelling, hit him, hit him, hit him, before the stolen car that he was in struck a cyclist on Beach Road in Melbourne South East in January. Amid the laughter followed, one said, oh, F, shit, my bad. It's not just a bad when you run someone down intentionally on Beach Road, when you target a cyclist, an innocent person. These offenders here are 14 years old. We've had offenders here that are 13 that have been on bail. This government wants to raise the age of legal responsibility to 14 over term. That is their goal in the next term. Don't care what they've been saying in the media this week. That is purely because it's infecting them and impacting them in the polls. They're an ideologically driven government that will aim to raise it to 14. Indeed. The reality is they said they've done the consultation. Well, let me assure you that consultation forgot the police association. It forgot to actually go to the Victoria Police who were openly saying they didn't want to raise the age. You could go back and even say, Shane Patton said, the frustrations were being felt by police officers who arrested young offenders to watch as they were granted bail. Then they do it again and they have to charge them again. Of course members get frustrated, he said. And it's when that comment came out, I was so disappointed to see the Chief Commissioner yesterday standing side by side with the government in relation to these changes when it comes to bail, when he knows it won't fix the problem when the Chief Commissioner knows he doesn't want the age raised, and he's said that publicly. And now he's come in here and stands side by side with it. You cannot have a government go out and politicise, like they have in the past, the Chief Commissioner. Indeed. We've got to have respect for the Victoria Police. Here, here. We have to make sure the Victoria Police are the centre of our community safety. We all know Steve Brack's putting on the epaulettes on a Chief Commissioner was the first sign of the politicisation of Victoria Indeed. Police Force. Shame. I am very proud and I love the Victoria Police Force. But let me assure you, let me assure you, when you have, when you have a Chief Commissioner who goes out and stands side by side with the government on a policy that he has openly criticised in the past is nothing short of disappointing. The Victoria Police Association don't support raising the age. The Victorian Liberals and Nationals don't support raising the age. Right. What we do support is return to the bail laws that were there in the past that the Chief Commissioner of Police, that the Police Association and every person on this side supported. And we want to make sure those bail laws are in place to protect the community. Because at the end of the day, it's not about any single person sitting on the government benches. It's not about any person sitting on our side. It's about the families of Ash Gordon. It's about the families of William Taylor. It's about the families of David Perina. And if we can't focus on those families and listen to them who are saying it is a cowardly response to keep bail laws weak, then we have failed in this place. We must be passionate about what we do in this place when it comes to protecting the community. Yeah, yeah. To come in here, like the member for Bayswater said, that this, the opposition never delivered a police officer in their time in government is nothing short of misleading the entire community. We proudly delivered 2,000 Victoria Police and over 900 PSOs because that was about keeping the community safe. We will continue to keep them safe rather than coming in here for political point scoring. 
But the political point I want is fix the bail laws and let's lock these kids up so they don't commit these violent crimes. Yeah.